Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, today's message is entitled, Blessed to be a Blessing. Or to put this another way, God blesses his people for the sake of the nations. And today we're going to read Psalm 67. It's not simply a request for blessings, but is instead a call to mission, a call to be a blessing to other people. And I know that when I reflect on my life, I have been blessed in so many different ways. My wonderful wife and child, to have a satisfying job, materialistic comfort and my health. And that's just to name a few. But these are not the central blessing in my life. Our health and our wealth should never be the foundation on which we build our lives. And if they are, this is idolatry, the prosperity gospel. It's the idea of putting created things above the creator. But the best blessing that we can have in our lives is the gift of salvation from our sin, which was bought by the precious blood of Jesus. So this gift of salvation, it goes infinitely beyond our health and our wealth. But when I was sat pondering this message, I was thinking, why? Why have I been so blessed? Why have we been so blessed? Surely it can't be all about us. So let's read Psalm 67 together. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and you guide the nations upon the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its increase. God our God shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. So in verse 1, the psalmist, who is most likely David, is calling out to God. He is pleading for God to be gracious to us and to bless us. It is likely that David is thinking of the benediction that is given in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 25, where it reads, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. But ultimately, this psalm begins with a plea for mercy. And we saw last week in Isaiah 53 that we are all like sheep who have gone astray. We all fall short of God's standards and we need his mercy. Charles Spurgeon wrote that the forgiveness of sin is always the first link in the chain of mercies experienced by us. It is the foundation of our salvation. So the best saints and the worst sinners may unite in this petition. It is the only real place to start this psalm by admitting that we are entirely dependent on God's grace. And we should start every day by praising God for his mercy, that we can have our sins forgiven through the blood of Jesus. But then David goes on to request a blessing for Israel. But this blessing was never meant just to be contained. It was not designed to be kept exclusively for the nation of Israel. So in Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, God is talking to Abram and he says, I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. God's blessing to Abram was not simply with the intention of making him rich and prosperous. It was so that Abram could be a blessing to other people. And the same is true in the psalm, that the link between verse one and two is critical. It's the crucial link. Because we are blessed in order that God's ways may be known on the earth. And that's why this is a psalm with a call to mission. A call to be part of the incredible task of making God known to the nations. And if we carry on reading the rest of the psalm, God's great purpose is revealed. In verse 2, he wants to be known to the nations. 
He is the one and only God. Isaiah 45 verse 5 reads, I am the Lord and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I am the Lord and there is no other. God wants to be known to the nations, but he wants to be praised by the nations. In verse 3, it says, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. And this is repeated again in verse 5. And I don't believe this is a vain repetition, but instead it's a chorus worthy of singing over and over again. Let the peoples praise you, O God. It's the main theme of the psalm, that God wants to be known and praised among the nations. And the psalmist is absolutely full of it. He can barely suppress his joy that is in the Lord. So are we a people of praise? When we as sinners see what the Lord has done for us, the only response is to praise him, is to cry out from a heart that is just saturated with a love of the gospel. So many things in life might make us happy. They might give us fleeting satisfaction. You know, occasionally Arsenal win a football match and it puts a smile on my face, but we lose the following Saturday. Things don't last. Our satisfaction, if it's found in earthly things, will never last. But true joy and satisfaction can be found in the Lord. So how sweet is it to sing for joy? To sing from a heart that is bursting with joy in the gospel. And this joy must vent its way out through praise. And this joy is described in verse 4 where it says, Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. But why? Why would the nations uh, be glad and sing for joy. Well, let's read on. For you judge the peoples with equity and you guide the nations upon the earth. So the psalmist here is looking forward to the day when the Messiah will sit on the throne of David and when he will rule the nations with truth and justice. Psalm 89 verse 14 describes this where it says righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. So God guides the nations upon the earth. He is the good shepherd and we are his flock. And this is why we can sing with joy. Not only is the Lord our shepherd, but he is our salvation. And this salvation is for the nations. We see that in verse two. It is for everyone that will turn to him in repentance and trust him as Lord and Saviour. Who is like the Lord our God? Strong to save, faithful in love. My debt is paid and the victory is won. The Lord is my salvation. And this is why we should be praying for blessings so that we can be a blessing to other people, that we can share this glorious news that the Lord is our salvation because the world needs it. We live in a world that is fallen, that needs salvation. And to quote C.S. Lewis, he wrote, don't shine so that others can see you. Shine so that through you, others can see him. Let's be a signpost to Jesus this morning. So as we close, how can we practically be a blessing for others? Well, when we get good news, we don't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to share it with other people. So when myself and Julie discovered that we were having another baby, we didn't want to keep it to ourselves. We want to tell people. We want to share that joyful news with friends and family. If we take this another way, a fountain doesn't just keep its water for itself. It pours it forth so everyone around the fountain can enjoy the water. And so it should be with the blessings that we get from God. We should want to share our blessings with others. We should want Jesus to be known among the nations. So how does this work? Well, I was thinking globally to start with. Let's get behind global missions. Now in the home group that uh, Joel MacDonald runs, uh, we had the pleasure of having Kim and Merv come to speak to us about their mission 
in India and the, how they're sharing the gospel there. And I've had many great discussions with my friend Mikey, who's a doctor in Liberia, hearing how the gospel is going out into these different places in the world. So let's try and get behind that. Now, we're not all called to go to Liberia, to go to India, but we can all play our part through prayer and through our generosity. So if you want, if you want any ways of getting involved, please get in touch with either myself or any of the, any of the leadership in the church if you want to be a part of global missions. But prayer is such a powerful weapon in seeing the gospel go out. But practically, how can we make this work closer to home? Because we all have a role to play in the advancement of the gospel. We're not just looking globally now. We can make a difference in our local area. God blesses his people so that we can be a blessing to others. Our call is to be a people who are infectious for the gospel. Because it's such good news, we can't keep it to ourselves. So my prayer is that we would be infectious for the gospel, that we would look for opportunities to share the gospel with those around us, whether that's at work or wherever we're able to socialise, if at all, in these tough times. That we would have the boldness to share these online messages, that we would, that we would want to share the gospel with others. We all know that one person who it's impossible to talk to without the conversation coming full circle around to the gospel and their love of Jesus. And I tell you, I want to be that person. I want to be the person that you can't have that conversation with, without it going all the way back to the gloriousness of our salvation. So my prayer is that we would all have a deeper joy in Christ, that we would seek to praise him with all our heart and our infectious love for Jesus would shine out into our community that the people around us would just see that there's something different about us and it would all point to Jesus. We live in a world that desperately, desperately needs the gospel and we have the good news, so let's share it with them. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this psalm. We thank you, Lord, that we are blessed, that we are blessed in so many ways and we praise you and we thank you for that. But we're reminded that it is all so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we can share this news with other people. So I just pray now for everyone listening to this, that we'd all reflect on how we can share the gospel with the people around us. And I pray that we would be bold and courageous, but we would be infectious for the gospel. In your mighty name. Amen. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Amen.